you have suffered financial loss while investing, and you think your bank, broker, fund management company, unit trust management company, PRS provider or distributor, or their agent or representative is responsible, you need help sorting out the problem or want to seek redress. Where do you go? Sidrek is here to help you start the conversation and reach some resolution. First, lodge a formal complaint with a company that sold or offered you the unit trusts, shares, derivatives or other capital market product or service. But you're not happy with their response. You have 180 days from their final written reply to come to Sidrek. Or if there's no written response and it's been 90 days since you wrote to them, you don't need to wait longer. You may come to Sidrek even though you haven't received a final response yet. Sidrek first checks the eligibility of your claim. For example, is it within Sidrek's claim limit? Is it against a member of Sidrek? And so forth. If your case is eligible, we begin the dispute resolution process. All information in this process is confidential. We get both you and the member you're complaining against to sit with us and have a conversation. Documents and information will be required from both parties. No lawyers are allowed in the mediation process as we keep the discussions informal and private. Our mediators are impartial and will hear both sides out and help parties communicate constructively towards resolving the dispute. Two outcomes are possible at this stage. Either both you and the member agree to a settlement or you don't. If the both of you agree to a settlement, an agreement is signed and the mediation process ends successfully. But if both you and the member fail to reach a satisfactory resolution, mediation has thus failed. But don't worry, Sidrek then proceeds to the next stage, adjudication. During adjudication, parties are given the chance to provide any further information to help their case and ask each other further question. Our adjudicator will then study and consider all facts and information provided, including the conduct of the parties, laws and best industry practices, as well as what's fair and reasonable. Sidrek's adjudicator will then make a final decision on the dispute and the monetary claim. If the decision is in your favour, it could be a full award or a partial award for your claim. But if the decision isn't in your favour, then no award will be made. You, the investor, will still have a choice. If you reject the decision, Sidrek will simply close the case and you may seek other legal avenues for redress. If you choose to accept the decision, however, the member has to comply with it. Once the parties have confirmed compliance to the decision, Sidrek will close the case. So let Sidrek help start the conversation towards resolution. For more information, visit sidrek.com.my or call 03-2282-2280. Hello everybody, welcome to this webinar brought to you by Brusa Malaysia and managed by our company LifeChamp. Our webinar title today is Unlocking the Power of IETFs, Strategies for Building a Diversified Portfolio. My name is Shane Chu, I'm the moderator for this session. Now are you an investor who looks for steady capital growth through a diversified portfolio? And if you are one, then look no further. ETF could be an investment uh, fund that you can consider to build a diversified portfolio. So today we're going to talk about how do we use exchange traded funds to build a diversified portfolio that can withstand the test of time and help you to get consistent uh, growth in your capital. Before we begin, uh, as usual, disclaimer, whatever we share in this session is only for educational purpose. In no way that I give any recommendation for you to buy or sell any listed securities that we mentioned here, 
If you decide to make any investment decisions, you're 100% responsible for all your investment risk. Now, allow me to briefly introduce our speaker today. And he's none other than Mr. Ong Sun Chong, who is the head of ETF and ESG investment of uh, Equate Capital. Now, Mr. Ong has more than 14 years of experience in fund management and investment research. He joined Value Cap Group in 2010 as Vice President of Investment Research. In uh, 2015, he was appointed as a Senior Vice President and also Portfolio Manager. So in this role, he managed various investment portfolios across the Malaysian and ASEAN markets. Following the acquisition of Equate, Egg Capital, uh, Equate Capitals in Jan Berhad, uh, formerly known as IV Cap Management in Jan Berhad by Kenanga Investors Berhad in 2021, Sun Chong spearheads passive uh, strategies, ESG investment, and systematic investing. He has vast experience in managing various local and regional funds, encompassing ETFs, ESG funds, equity and balance portfolios. His other experience includes multiple roles in investment banks and big four accounting firms. So Mr. Ong holds a Bachelor of Accounting from Multimedia University. He is also a fellow member of Association of Chartered Certified Accountants and the Malaysian Institute of Accountants. He holds a Capital Market Services Representative License from the uh, Securities Commission Malaysia for Fund Management. So welcome to this session, uh, Mr. Ong. Pleasure to have you here today with us. Hi. Thanks, yes, Shane, can for hear your... you. All right. Fantastic. So, um, okay. well, without further ado, we would like to learn how do we build a diverse portfolio ETF and what exactly is an ETF, right? So we'll just hand over the session to you. I will stop sharing my screen and uh, you may take it over. Sure. Thanks, Shane. Uh, thank you so much for your kind introduction. A uh, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, first of all, thanks uh, Busa for inviting me to this uh, to this webinar, and also of course I would like to thank all of you for your time in this wonderful Friday night. You know, uh, Friday evening, I believe a lot of people will have dinner plan, will have other 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 family commitments and all that. And for those who join us tonight, I really appreciate your time, and I will make sure I will share with you so that you know as much as i can that you can bring back uh some knowledge today that could be useful for your investments in future today i would like to share with you an investment product which is actually very common uh, or popular in many countries across the world uh, including singapore Taiwan, Korea, uh, the Euro, US, and so on. So uh, which the product that I would like to share is Exchange Traded Fund, or we call ETF. So ETF is an investment instrument that is very common uh, in many other countries, but unfortunately, it is less popular in Malaysia. So from my based uh, or, or, or rough uh, estimations, you know, probably only three or four out of 10 uh, investors that I engage or I ask, they know, uh, they, they heard of ETF and know what ETF is. So without further ado, let us dive, deep dive into what an ETF is. When I talk about ETF, I always like to make comparisons to unit trust fund and also listed shares, which are much more familiar by most of the investors nowadays. So what is an ETF? Exchange traded fund is an investment fund. Okay, it's a pool of funds. So it will be actually similar like when I talk about investment fund, what come to most of people's mind you need trust because uh, a lot of retail investors are more familiar with unit trust fund. They, they, most of them probably, most of you, I believe that uh, you, you heard of unit trust fund and I, I believe a lot of you may have invested in uh, unit trust fund. So like what you know, unit trust fund is an investment fund which consists of, a, of baskets of stocks or bond or commodities inside 
uh, a pool of funds and it is professionally managed by fund manager. And of course, uh, when managed by fund manager, it will have management fee. So uh, when how do you buy a unit trust fund? You will buy through the uh, unit trust fund agent, right? Yeah. So on the other hand, shares or listed shares are familiar by most of the, by, by I believe all of the investors. So shares on the other hand is not a basket of funds or, or it's not the investment fund, but it's a single stocks. And how do we buy and sell? We, of course, shares are trade through the, the exchanges and you can buy through the brokerage account, such as Maybank, Rakuten, you know, now we have, a, recently we have new uh, brokerage firm, uh, Mumu, okay? So you can trade intraday and the settlement B plus two and so on. So I believe these are quite familiar by all of you. So imagine this, that ETF is actually a hybrid of a unit trust and shares. So it have the features or character of both, combined of the both. So um, in, in short, I would like to always introduce people about ETF in, in this way that you imagine a unit trust fund that is listed on Brusa Exchange for you to trade, buy and sell. So the definition is that ETF is an investment fund that tracks an index or basket of assets and trade on an exchange like a stock. So ETF is a fund. In summary, ETF is a fund that can trade it on an exchange like Brusa as same as like uh, stocks. So the next most frequently questions that I get is because I talk so much about unit trust, right? So people will ask me what exactly is the difference between unit trust and ETF. So let's us dive deep dive into this and have a look at what are the difference between unit trust and ETF. So first of all, as you can see on the table, unit trusts are mostly actively managed. What does actively manage means that the fund is managed by a fund manager. The fund manager will select good companies and buy into the portfolios for you, for the fund to make money. And on the other hand, exchange traded fund is actually passively managed. So what does passively manage means that it is actually a index tracking, we track an index. I will jump into this more detail in my, in my next slide. So we just, just bear with me on this first. So let's look at other differences between the UT fund or unit trust fund uh, and exchange traded fund. So when you want to buy unit trust fund, you buy through the unit trust agent and you buy at, there is only one pricing in a day, which is the end of day NAV. So you buy uh, uh, at the NAV through the unit trust agent. Whereas for ETF, like what I have mentioned just now, it traded like a stock. So what happened is that when you want to buy or sell, you buy or sell through the uh, broking to the, the, through the securities firm, like the Nanga, you know, Rakuten, uh, Mumu or, 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 or any, any names that you, you are familiar with, you know, as long as you have a CDS account, you can open uh, uh, any CDS account or any trading account with the, with the uh, securities firm and you can trade. And for ETF, you can buy and sell during the trading hour of Busa Exchange and at market price. For investment amount, uh, for the proceeds or in settlement, when it comes to settlement, uh, unit trust fund, they always are uh, deducted upfront, meaning which when you sign up for, for, for the unit trust, when you subscribe to the unit, you, unit trust or you buy the unit trust, you will your money will be deducted, then the unit will be created and uh, credited into your account. And when you sell or we call redem redemption, the process, 
the money will paid to you normally by T plus six six days after you you you, you sell depends on which unit trust that you you buy. So on the other hand, uh, ETF is like any shares. The investment amount will be deducted on T plus two. You know, as per USA settlement timeline, same as all other stocks, and the sales proceeds will paid to UT plus two. When come to fee, unit trust fund will typically charge you sales charge of it can come up to like three percent, four percent, depends on what what it is, which which it you need trust fund you buy. And annually, it will charge management fee ranging from 1% to 1.8% per annum. Whereas for ETF, um, there is no sales charge. When you buy, you don't need to pay any, in, in, any sales charge. Of course, because it's like stocks, you, you, you trade through the exchange. So you will need to pay your, pay your brokerage, clearing fee, uh, and stamp duty. But of course, now stamp duty has been exempted for ETF or trading of ETF because Bursa Malaysia is uh, promoting uh, ETF as, a, as an investment <laughs> instrument. So when it comes to management fee, uh, ETF always have a very low uh, management fee compared to unit trust fund, typically below 1%. Most of it is only 0 0.6, 0.4% uh, per annum. That, 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 that is the fee that is uh, management fee that will be, will be charged. Just now I mentioned about ETF is uh, an index tracking fund, passively managed index tracking fund. So when we talk about ETF, we have to understand what an index is or what index um, uh, mean. So index, uh, like what you all may, may, may be familiar or may not be familiar, uh, I give you an example, FBM KLCI. So I believe everybody will know FBM KLCI. So FBM KLCI is an index. Okay, so index typically is a benchmark to measure the performance of a particular market. Like for example, FBM KLCI is the index to... Uh, what do I what do you call to to measure the performance of Malaysia's stock market, right? So there are many many other index out there in the world. So for example, we have this uh index called Dow Jones US Titan Fifty Index, which is uh which is an Sharia in Sharia compliant index that track the fifty largest uh, Sharia stocks in US. So this is this is this is an this is an index. Um, now we know what index is. So what is ETF? In order for you to make money, you know some people they buy shares. Some people invest in unit trust fund, which is a investment, uh, <clears throat> which is an investment fund with a basket of product. How about if you don't want to stop pick, you know, you don't want to, 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 to let the fund manager choose what, what shares you like, okay? And you don't want to pick stocks like, uh, I, I need to do homework to know which stocks I want to buy. But I just want to track the overall uh, equity market. So in this case, you will, you can do this by investing in an ETF. So give, give, giving, uh, you know, referring back to my earlier example of FBM KLCI, we know FBM KLCI tracks the Malaysia uh, equity market. So if I just want to, you know, same as, you know, invest in Malaysia equity market as large, you know, I don't want to pick stocks, you know, if Malaysia market go up, I, I, I go up, Malaysia market go down, I go down, you know, so I will buy an ETF that tracks FBM KLCI. So likewise, if I want to invest in the top 50 stocks in US, uh, you, you, as you all know, US have many good companies, you know, you have Microsoft, you know, Apple, you know, and uh, NVIDIA, you know, uh, uh, Google, Facebook, and, and so on. There's so many good companies there. So there are people who, who wants to, to invest in the top 50 stocks 
in the uh, US. So how do they do this? They can buy an ETF that tracks this index. So therefore, ETF typically uh, seek to produce or to replicate the return of a specific index. Like, for example, um, in this case, we have a US Titan 50 index whereby they have a top 50 stocks of list, uh, listed in US, okay, in this index. So how the ETF track the, in, uh, the performance is that the ETF will invest or buy exactly the same stocks like the index, same weighting, same, same weightage of, of, of each stocks. And therefore, when you buy a single ETF, you will have exposure on the whole basket of the index. So therefore, when the index go up 1%, your ETF will go up 1%. If the index go down 1%, your ETF performance will go down same 1% or so. So by investing in the basket of the index stocks, uh, according to the to, to, to the weighting, uh, the ETF actually tracks or replicate the returns of the index. And like what you what like what I have shared just now, um index tracking by the name, such, I mean referring to the name also, you know, as the name suggests, also you know already. Tracking means I replicate something exactly the same. So therefore an ETF is not do not intend to outperform the, 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 the underlying index, but just merely uh, replicate it. Okay, I hope you all understand this concept because uh, this is the most important concept that you need to understand when it comes to ETF. But just remember that if you want to track any index, you look for an ETF that tracks the index and you buy the ETF, okay? So uh, today's topic is actually on IETF, or we call Sharia ETF. So what, what does Sharia ETF means is that Sharia ETF, of course, is a Sharia version of uh, an ETF. And Sharia ETF tracks only the Sharia compliance company in the benchmark index, while the conventional ETF tracks any, any uh, uh, benchmark index, regardless of the Sharia, Sharia, Sharia status. Okay, so uh, the manager of Sharia ETF has to be adhere to the very strict uh, Sharia principle and Islamic investment guidelines, as well as will be overseen by a Sharia board or committee, which is responsible to conduct periodic Sharia compliance audit and review. So it means that a fund will, under, will undergo a very comprehensive Sharia screening exercise before it can be qualified as a Sharia ETF or IETF. So to ensure the continuous Sharia compliance uh, of the fund, the Sharia screening of every single stocks in the ETF will be conducted at the time of investment decision is made, meaning which when the fund start buying the, any stocks before even buying the, 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 the stocks, the ETF fund itself will do the uh, Sharia screening to make sure that it's Sharia compliance, then only it can be included. And after included also, throughout the whole investment life cycle, uh, the screening will be conducted periodically to make sure the Sharia compliance of the underlying stocks in the funds uh, at any point in time. So rest assured that you know any Sharia Sharia ETF will be uh, when you when you invest into it, it is Sharia compliant. And SC, of course, SC is more is, is, is governed on this uh, with a very strict uh, principle and also guideline. So what type of uh, ETF is there in the market? We have an ETF that the underlying or in the, the invest in shares. We have ETF that invest in fixed income or bond and also commodity like gold and so on. 
And of course, uh, we have uh, ETF that is invest in money market, more exotic property, alternative assets like 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 wine or Bitcoin or any any alternative assets, and also special uh specialty, okay ETF. So specialty ETF is like for example leverage uh and invest ETF. So in Malaysia, we only have uh, ETF uh, for shares that track shares, uh, fixed income, commodity, and uh, specialty, which is LNI, uh, leverage and invest ETF only. So we only have the first, uh, the top, the top, the, the upper three, and also here. Okay, we in Malaysia so far we don't have uh, money market ETF property and other assets. So let's look at the ETF landscape in Malaysia uh, for your information. So currently we have 15 ETF that is listed on Bursa Malaysia. On the left hand side, red color, you can see that this is, uh, we have nine conventional ETFs. So uh, we have the one that tracks the Bursa Malaysia's KLCI, we have ASEAN, China, and so on. Uh, we have one fixed income, and we have two leverage and invest ETF. On my right side, the blue color ones, um, as you can see, is Sharia compliant ET ETF or IETF. We have, we have six in the market. So we have one commodity, which is gold ETF. And oh, we have the table down there, we have uh, Sharia ETF that tracks the top 50 uh, listed Sharia listed company in US. We have uh, ETF that tracks the top 25 Sharia compliance stocks in Malaysia. We have uh, Malaysia Dividend ETF. We have ASEAN Dividend uh, ETF and also China. So those that mark with star, uh, I mean, I need to put, put up a disclaimer. Those that have a, a, a star here next to the name is the ETF that managed by Kenanga Investment Investors Brahat Group uh, and also by Equip Capital. Now, I believe you all ha have some idea what an ETF is and what type of ETF are available in the market. Let's look at the benefit of investing in ETF as compared to other investment instruments. So the first one and the one of the most important one is of course diversification. This is because when you buy an ETF, you buy into an investment fund which have a basket of securities inside. So with a single instrument that you invest in, you have a whole long list of stocks inside. Second benefit is low cost. Uh, the management fee is very low uh, compared to other unit trust fund and so on. So uh, therefore, you know, low cost in long run means that your return will be better. And it is very easy access. You just need to have a CDS account, uh, a trading account uh, with, a, with CDS, and you can freely trade, you know, uh, ETF, just like any shares. What, what more important is the transparency. ETF being an investment fund, it is required to disclose it's holding on daily basis. If we give you this example, when you buy an unit trust fund, do you know what are actually the fund manager buy in your portfolio? I mean, it is essentially this is your money, right? The fund manager help you to invest. But when you buy into unit trust fund, do you know what are actually the underlying? What are the shares that the, 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 the fund owns? You know, essentially what you own or what you invest in. You may not know, honestly speaking, right? Because unit trust fund will only disclose the top holding, top 
five holdings or top 10 holdings if you are lucky, you know, on quarterly basis. So you will only know, you know, every quarter what are the top five holdings in the in, in, in the fund. That is doesn't transparent enough, right? So for ETF, I mean they are invest, they are different types of investors. Not necessarily every investor care to know about it, but they are always investors, a group of investors that would like to know what they invest in. So in this case, ETF will provide that type of transparency. And every day you can go to Busan Malaysia's uh, website to see all the holdings on daily basis of of the of what are the ETFs on uh, uh, invest in. Okay, so that is the, the transparency benefits that you will enjoy. Last but not least is the liquidity. Okay, so uh, ETF actually will have good liquidity um, because it is supported by market maker. Meaning which when you in when you buy a shares in uh in the exchange in Busan, I mean I mean on Busan Malaysia, sometimes you know uh there are many types of stocks in, in Busan Malaysia, right? In exchange, right? Some are very liquid, you know, you can trade easily, some are less liquid, right? For ETF, well, liquidity is an issue. The answer is no. Why? Because all the liquidity, all the ETF will be supported by market maker who provide you liquidity or bid and sell, uh, or bid and ask uh, a price every day. I would I will I will go into this more detail in my in my later in my later slides. So just bear in mind that you know when you buy ETF, you don't need to worry about liquidity. Okay, so this is another topic that I wish to share. Okay, just now I mentioned that unit trust fund. Again, I like to compare with unit trust fund. When we invest in unit trust fund, you have a fund manager that I mentioned just now that actively manage your fund for you, right? It means that the, what the manager, what the fund manager do is the fund manager will pick good stocks or the stocks that they feel that will make money and buy into the fund and trade in and out to make sure you know uh, the, the, the fund make, make money, right? So what happened to ETF? ETF, we don't have made, uh, actively, it's not actively managed, it is passively managed. So tracking an index, like what I shared just now, you know, it track broad market index. So how do you make sure that what you buy, you know, the, the stocks that invest by the ETF funds are good companies, are always have, you know, good companies that can make money, right? Of course, if you invest, you want to invest in the fund that have uh, underlying stocks that can make money, right? So um, how ETF does this is that ETF will have a process which we call rebalancing. What does rebalancing do is every every quarter or some can be every every month, but in general, ETF will do rebalancing on a quarterly basis. So what does a rebalancing do is the index provider or the index that the ETF tracks will look at the list of stocks in the index or in the ETF to to, to, to screen through it to make sure that you know only the good stocks are there. So those that are not performing, those stocks that are not performing will be excluded from the index and the good ones will be included into the uh, index or the ETF. So give you an example, you know, during the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, if you are still can recall what stock are very hot during that time. None other than the glove stocks, right? Yeah. So during the time, if you look at the local uh, local ETF or, or, or ETF that tracks the local market, you will notice that they have a very big weighting of glove stocks. So it means that when the rebalancing happened, 
the index provider will include all the hot or performing stocks into the index and remove those, those that is not performing. So meaning which in the long run, when I keep putting good one in and kick out all the bad, bad ones, essentially what you will achieve or you will have is you will have the access to what I call best in class stocks in your portfolio. Okay, so this is quite similar to uh, active managed fund in some sense. Active managed fund, fund manager will do the study, then buy in, into it. Uh, but of course, it's in more frequent basis. You know, it can be on daily basis buy and sell, uh, uh, changing changing the the underlying stocks uh, in the in the in the fund. Whereas for ETF, it has a systematic process that it will pick good stocks to include and exclude all the bad stocks. So in long run, uh. This will make sure that the fund will continue to evolve and maintain the investment strategy in long run. Give you an example, okay, to better understanding what I mean by best in class stocks. So I use back the example of, of just now I mentioned the top US 50 ETF which tracks the top 50 Sharia compliance stocks in the US in the US market. Okay, uh, this ETF is called US uh, Equip EU, US 50 listed on Bursa Malaysia. So it tracks the 50 uh, top Sharia compliance stocks in, in, in the US. So if you invest in that ETF, what essentially it means is that you invest at the same time you will invest into 50 stocks, right? So it will be the, the fund will invest into the uh, <clears throat> according to the weighting. And like what you can see in this example, if you were to invest 1,000 ringgit in, in this ETF, what you essentially own is 104 ringgit worth of Microsoft, 99 ringgit of Apple, you know, 98 ringgit of uh, Nvidia, um, 79 ringgit of Amazon, and the list goes on. Okay, as you can see, all these are very, very good companies in US, right? This is because the index actually <clears throat> have been re rebalanced to make sure that only all these good good companies that will be in will, will be included. Okay, so this actually give you another benefit what of what we call pricing accessibility. So I give you an example. Eh? If you invest 1,000 ringgit, you own, you own a 50 stocks, right? You own a, a basket of 50 stocks. And it is very affordable, right? I mean, for 1,000 ringgit for, for, for an investment. Imagine if you were need to go into a US market to buy your own, what will happen? Just one, one shares of NVIDIA shares, it will cost you 4,000 ringgit, 4,177, you know, based on uh, uh, last week's closing, based on last week's closing price. So imagine if you were to do it yourself, if you want to buy the top 50 stocks, I'm not talking about buying a lot, you know, I'm just talking about buying each of the share, each, each of the companies, just buy one shares, it will cost you more than 20,000 ringgit. So how do you do this, you know, in a more, in, in a, in, in a more affordable or, or, or more access, accessible way? Is that through the ETF? Okay, I think I have talking enough of a benefit or good things about ETF. And of course, I will need to, I mean, it's my responsibility to share with you also what are the risks when you invest in ETF or so. There is nothing that only has benefits and no, 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 no risk, right? So, okay. So of course, market risk, any investment will expose you to market risk. Uh, as, as I, what I have shared just now, ETF tracks broad market, index market, you know, a, a broad market uh, index. So therefore, any market fluctuations, you know, you can experience losses. Uh, 
when market are down. Okay. So um and also because ETF are passively invest and and, and therefore there is no mechanism to avoid losses during market downturn. What does that mean? It means that during market downturn, say for example, if uh, uh, something happened, you know, um, geopolitical risk uh, 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 events or, or any war or anything, you know, stock market collapse uh, uh, or, or, you know, um, uh, collapse or, or retrace, what happened is that the active fund Fund manager may or may not, of course, because they are actively managed, they can choose to sell all the underlying. But when you invest in ETF, the ETF will track the, 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 the market. It won't, it won't sell off. You know, it will still own the same stocks. So therefore, it, you, it, it doesn't have a mechanism to avoid these losses. But of course, it's always two, two sides of, of the coins. Depends on how you see things, right? So if when market go up also, um, you won't miss it because it's always invested. So when you when 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 market goes up because ETF tracks the market, you will you will always always go up um to track the market. So liquidity risk, uh the second risk is liquidity risk. There are some ETF that uh liquidity are quite low. And on the right hand side, I wish to share this called tracking error risk. Okay, so like what I have shared just now, uh, ETF try to track an index. So in an, in a very uh, unlikely kind of uh, situation, there are ETF that fails to track the index. Okay, so uh, like for example, there are certain stocks or underlying stocks within the index that the, the, the ETF fund couldn't couldn't buy or any reasons and therefore you know the, the the tracking error meaning which how how best you know the ETF can track the index will be will, will, will happen you know so uh, this is the risk and another risk will be uh the unit may trade other than 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 the than the NAV so meaning which and in an investment Fund, we will always have a net asset value, right? Which is how much the how much the fund actually worth based on all the underlines. You know, your value. Say, for example, in my in my ETF, I have five stocks. So I add up the value of these five stocks. It is come up to per unit one ringgit. Okay, example. But because it is exchange traded, right? This ETF is traded on USA exchange. So when anything that is exchange traded is based on demand and supply. So when the value worth one ringgit, when you trade in exchange, it could trade at ninety nine cent or or one or or, or one o one right, or one ringgit and one cent. You know, so it depends on the market uh demand and supply. Liquidity. Okay, just now I mentioned, I promised that I will come into liquidity and talk more about liquidity. So look at the diagram. This diagram, this diagram represents any, any trading of, uh, of uh, instrument, any instrument. We will always have two groups of people. One is the buyer, one is the seller. And trade can only close or match or done when the buyer match the price pricing of the seller or the seller match the pricing of the buyer. So what happened if there is not enough seller or not enough buyer? Okay, so therefore, nothing can be done, no, no trade, right? So that's why we call illiquid stocks. In, in the case of ETF, Every single ETF that listed on Busan Malaysia are required to appoint a market maker. So what market maker does is they provide liquidity. Market maker will trade as a middleman um, in, in the market. Of course, um, if we have enough buyer and seller, that's fine. In the event that there is no buyer and seller, market maker will always there to provide 
bid and ask, you know, buy and sell both side. They will they will have you know uh queue at both side of the uh, in the exchange. So whoever that wants to buy, you know, they can market maker can fulfill. Whoever that wants to sell, the market maker can fulfill as well. So therefore, provide liquidity to the ETF. You know, if you if you know a little bit about the market, often probably you will hear that, hey, why I want to buy ETF, but there's no liquidity. When I look at the screen, you know, the, the, the bid and ask, hey, or last traded uh, or last done volume. When I look at the volume, the, the so-called uh, 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 traded volume, why ETF, like no trades, you know, some ETF may not have trade for, 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 for one, two days, you know, what happened is that, means that there's no liquidity? The answer is no. This is because, like what I mentioned just now, on-screen on liquidity is not an indicative of the liquidity for ETF. Why? Because ETF, although you see there's no trade done for the past two days, so assume, assume that, you know, there is a stock that you see, hey, how come, you know, this stock two days have no, 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 nobody trades? Must be a must be a very illiquid stock, right? So if you see an ETF two days nobody trade, is that means that it is illiquid and you can't buy and sell? The answer is no, because there is always a level two, uh, level two liquidity, which means uh there will be a market maker that are what I shared earlier, you know, that always put a bid and ask that. So although there is no trade for the past two days, if you want to buy, you go in there, I, chances are you will still see Q on, 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 on bid and Q on us. So therefore, you know, it means that you still can, you still can buy. And in a very un, unlikely event that if you are, you know, if you wish to buy or sell ETF in a very large, uh, large quantity. Okay, say for example, I want to buy this ETF, say five hundred thousand. So the market can the market support? Okay, I look at the liquidity. Even I look at the bid and ask there. You know, it's not enough for me to buy five hundred thousand. So what do I do? Right, means not not liquid enough, is it? No, the answer again. The answer is no. Why? Because we have again, we have this primary market. So this ETF, um, if you can recall just now, I mentioned that it is hybrid. It is a hybrid of a uh, unit trust fund, right? When you want to buy unit trust fund, you have 200,000. Can you buy it? Of course, can, right? Easily, you just give the money to, to the agent, right? So in ETF, we have an equivalent uh, rack or party that can fulfill this. If you want or wish to buy at a large quantity, you can go to someone we call participating dealer. Every ETF will appoint a market maker and also participating dealer. So participating dealer is where is a, is a party that will do a creation or redemption for, for, for investors who wish to buy and sell a very large amount. Say for uh, my <clears throat> refer back to my earlier example. If I want to buy five hundred thousand, you know what do I do? I just need to check who are the participating dealer for that ETF. Give them a call. Say I want to buy five hundred thousand worth, and the participating dealer will contact will contact the ETF uh, providers, and they will take your cash and they will issue you the ETF unit. So this is how ETF is always liquid, but on screen, you know, it may not appear as very liquid, but when you really want to buy and sell, you will notice that you are always able to get your trade done. Okay, well, I think we have enough uh, so-called introduction or basic understanding on uh, ETF already. So now we talk something about more real. Start investing in ETFs. Enough. Okay. So when you want to buy ETF, 
what you should look at. Of course, the first thing you should look at, it will be on the right hand side of the table. Okay, this one. Okay, the index strategy. What does essentially you must understand what are you investing in? You know, what are the ETF uh, objective or invest or investment strategy is? Okay, so what is the index invest in? You know, whether it's Malaysia stock, uh, 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 tracking the Malaysia market or track the US top 50 or it's a dividend uh, ETF or it's a commodity ETF, you know, anything that what are the underlying, what you really want to invest in and what are the, the uh, component of the ETF. Okay, like for example, I want to invest in, I know US have a lot of good companies. I want to invest, but I don't know what company to invest. So never mind, I just invest the top, you know, uh, uh, ETF that have that tracks the top 50. So you look for, you know, the those those ETF that have the strategy or investment, investment strategy whereby it tracks the top 50. Okay, or in Malaysia, I want to invest in uh, dividend stocks, but I don't know how to pick a good dividend stock. So what do I do? Right, I go and look for an ETF, uh, a dividend ETF. So that is what uh, what I call that you must understand the, 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 the strategy behind. So of course, the second thing that you want to look at is the tracking error. Uh, I have explained earlier that whether how well the ETF tracks the index, okay, and also uh, total expense ratio or, we, or what we call the cost, the cost of um, uh, the, the, the fee that you need to pay when you invest uh, into, the, into the ETF. Yeah, so uh, typically the total expense ratio for ETF in Malaysia are less than 1% uh, per annum. Okay, and there are often things, you know, there are often, uh, there are things that are often being overlooked by investors when they invest in ETF, which is transaction cost, um, withholding tax. If you if you buy uh, if you buy the uh, what do you call um uh directly, you know, the US stocks, when you buy directly US stocks or any overseas stocks, um chances are you will be hit by the withholding withholding tax, right? And also the transaction cost could be high. You know, and also the currency impact, okay, the currency spreads. So those are the things that generally overlooked by investors when they when they invest. But if you buy into an ETF, uh, all these things are actually will be managed will be managed under the fund. But you, of course, as investors, you must know what is happening. So this is. This is S&P 500. Why I use S&P 500 is because S&P 500 is generally being um, portrayed or reflected or known as the equity market, broad equity market in US. So this is the return of uh, S&P 500 for the past 10 years. As you can see, that for the past 10 years, US broad market has been up for 237%. Okay, annualized, it is almost 13% a year. This is broad market. So, meaning which, if I don't want to do any, you know, if I am not good or don't have enough time to go into study what stocks I want, I want to buy, I just want to leverage on the broad market, you know, invest in the broad market, say US market. Okay, I just try to 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 track the the performance of the broad market. What will be my return? You know, I buy an ETF that tracks the the the, the S and P five hundred. What are what what my return is is that on annualized meaning, which every year basis, I every year I will make thirteen percent. You know, without even need to do stock pick or or. Do any any trading in between. Okay, so this is this is this is the broad market's return. So when come to investment, there are a few things that I wish to share. 
and you and it's very important for you to know. First rule is that we can really time the market one. Okay, none of us have the crystal ball that can tell you when will be when the market will up, when the market will down. Okay, so we can't time the market. So how do I do? How do I position my investment, especially long term investment? Is that say for example, I believe in US. So for long term, it means that you know I just need to make sure that I look at, you know, I search for positive return. You know, I I I want to. How do you manage your long term investment? Is of course you look for return and manage your risk. Okay, and how to manage your risk is that of course the most important one is diversification. You don't don't put all the eggs into the same the same baskets. So you diversify your investment into different different uh, uh companies or different different sectors. Then in long run you will get a better uh returns and also uh manage your risk better. So rule number one is you can't time the market. So what if you, how do you position your investment is that a long-term investment is look for something that would return and manage your risk well. Okay. And how do you manage your risk? You do diversification and you consistently participate. Okay. So I'll give you an example. Eh? This one, I just I mentioned already, if you were to do nothing, just invest into, into, into the broad market, you will earn 13% a year. And of the past 10 years, you will make 237%, a very good or respectable returns, right? But if I don't consistently participate, I, you know, I, I, I go in and out, what will happen to me? You know, I may you know, caught here, this point, you know, I buy at this point, then it drops and I panic, I sell. So, you know, I lost half of my money. Okay. So, if I buy here, you know, if I, if I buy at this, if I buy at this low, you know, and when you go up here, of course, I make a lot of money. But how many people can always catch the low? We, 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 we are not able to, right? So what is the best strategy? The best strategy is that I consistently participate. Every month I buy, every month I buy, every month I buy and I hold. So what will happen in long run is I will achieve then market average, average of the market return. So this is a sim, sim, simplified version of what I tried to explain just now. You know, market up. Market down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, when down, I buy. When up, I buy. When down, I buy. And, and up, I buy. So essentially, what will be my return? My average will be the market average. And therefore, I will enjoy the broad market's return in long run. Historically, historically, equity market, in, equity market generate 10%. Long-term historical uh, returns for equity market is 10%. So as long as you know you are in you invest in regular intervals and also you know you can do you, you can plan your investment. You know, uh, one of the suggestions is that you do a equal amount. Every month I put aside, you know, I buy 500, you know, every month I buy 500, you know, regardless of the market condition because you just simply can't time it, right? So in long run, you will achieve the market return and your risk will be pretty low because you won't be having the problem like, oh, I buy here now, you know, the market is here, you know, I buy at high and the market is low now, so I'm very worried, I'm very worried you know, I couldn't sleep already, right? So if you are a long-term player, you plan yourself, you manage your risk, you diversify, you, but you participate in a regular interval by across uh, different, different market conditions and you will enjoy the, the return. Let's look at a more real life example of how do we use ETF in our portfolios? Okay, so let's look at the portfolio A first. 
Okay, this is, I believe this is uh, a quite a common portfolio composition of many investors. You know, I keep about 30% of cash. Uh, I, I, I invest about 70% of my money in stocks, you know, um, because I don't have enough time or to do homework, you know, I buy about three to four stocks that I like. Okay, so this is a typical, this is a typical uh, uh, portfolio composition of uh, 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 retail investors. So what happened is that if I have this, if I have this type of portfolio, what will be, what will be the situation? The chances are you will hear these investors tell you, hey, yo, I have three, I invest in three or four stocks, but market go up, uh, my stocks didn't go up. You know, you uh, you you often hear this, right? My market go up so high in me, but my stock never go up, right? So this is what you often hear. So now let's look at another investors with the portfolio composition of portfolio B. These investors, he has a 20% cash and he invests 10% in dividend ETF. Okay. Uh, dividend ETF, as what the name suggests, you know, it, it, dividend ETF, well, uh, it's those ETF that invest in high dividend, so therefore, you know, you can have a better interest. So let's compare this, this component first. If you put 30% of your cash into bank to get the FD rate or, 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 or savings account, even worse, compared to if you have 20% here and 10% in a dividend stocks. Okay, bearing that there is no bad market conditions, okay, assuming your dividend stocks didn't really go up or, or go down a lot, uh, but when you, the risk, the dividend return that you receive are generally better than your cash uh, FD rate or savings accounts rate, right? So in this manner, this portfolio, uh, this portfolio could potentially uh, have a better uh, regular income, but of course exposed to, 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 some, to some market risk. Okay. But uh, it can also, you know, on the, on the flip side, you know, the dividend stocks may go up also. Right. So dividend, dividend stocks, now everybody talking about uh, US is going to cut rate if interest rate go down, you know, dividend stocks will go up. So these investors could be benefited if US cut rate, okay, from his investment in dividend ETF. Yeah. So look at another, this component, component, okay. So these investors buy three or four stocks that, that he thinks can, that, that, can, that can go up. Compared to this investor B, Okay, here he also buy two or three stocks that he like, 25% uh, uh, allocation, but he also, like, he diversified. Instead of only buy two to three stocks in uh, Malaysia stocks, he also <clears throat> invest 20% in US equity ETF. Okay, so when Malaysia market are not moving, US market go up, he can enjoy also, okay, because he have a better diversification. And also, when overall you Malaysia market go up, just now I said, you know, you often hear people say, I buy three or four stocks, but why KLCI go up already? You know, market go up already, but my stock never go up. So in this case, these investors will not, will at least have a better risk management profile when it comes to this, because he has a Malaysia equity ETF here. Malaysia equity ETF, tracks the overall market. So when overall market goes up, he will actually, he will at least enjoy from here, even though his two or three stocks may or may not, you know, go up, okay? But of course, if he pick the right stocks, uh, when market go up, he enjoy from here and he can enjoy from the good stocks that he picked also, okay? And in long run, these investors could be better off in terms of risk profile because he diversified into different markets. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a real life, uh, uh, a more, more, more real kind of uh, portfolio composition that I wish to share with you uh, that 
you can consider to restructure or, or re restructure your, your, your portfolio and use some of ETFs into your portfolio to build a more diversified portfolio. Okay. Uh, I think I my sharing is, you know, I will stop here. That's all from me. I will go uh I will go into Q and A session. Uh Shane, uh can I pass it back to you? Sure. Thanks, uh, Mr. Ong, for a very insightful session uh with us. Uh I guess that many of us here have learn what exactly is our exchange to the funds and how do we use them to build a diversified portfolio. Uh, thanks for all the examples. So if any questions to ask our speaker today, you may write them at the Q&A box. Okay, don't write them at the chat box, write them at the Q&A box. Wow, on my screen, there are many questions already. So, yes. So let's keep them coming. So the first question here is that... um. Uh, Mr. Ong, this question is hmm. by Maslan Yusuf. So where can we find the list of the 50 stocks in the Titan 50 ETF? Oh, okay. So um, for, to find the Titan 50 uh, stock list, you can go to our, you can go to our <coughs> website, okay, uh, equate.com.mine, or you can go to Busan Malaysia's website. Uh, we have the list like what I have mentioned, uh, ETF disclose the list of um the list of the constituents on daily basis, so you can find that. Mm, right. Thanks so much, uh, Mr. Ong. So the next question is by Masmiza Mohamed Amin. You know, can you share with us um what about Sharia Gold Tracker ETF? How can the ETF be a basket? Okay, so this is the question. Okay, so when it comes to gold ETF, right? Okay, so uh, first, first of all, I need to put put up a disclaimer first. Um, gold ETF is not managed by 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 my by my company. So what my sharing is just based on my own understanding. Okay, so um, uh, you can in and any any more details, you know, you can go go to go to the issuer or 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 or, or, or other investment professional. Yeah. Okay, so for gold ETF, that is not um, uh, not a basket, but actually the underlying of 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 of, of the gold of the gold ETF is actually a a, a real a, a, a gold certificate. So uh, uh, in this case, it is not a basket basket as in like have many many types of gold because there is only one type of gold in uh, gold in the in the in the ETF, yeah. Right. Okay, thanks. Uh, yes, thanks, Mr. Ong, for the explanation. So, uh, for more details, can refer to the issuer who is a uh, trip plus. Okay. Um, the next question is by Zaidan. So, um, to open an account with Equate, is it the same like opening an account with any brokers? Maybe Mr. Ong can enlighten us. How do you trade ETF? Okay. Sorry. Ah. So just 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 let me uh, clarify this. Okay. So Equate is uh is is uh e e Equate is not a broker uh it's not a is, Equate is not a broker we are ETF issuer we issue and manage ETF so uh you technically you can't really open account with 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 us but of course you can invest in our our ETF to invest in in our ETF you know you can open bro brokerage account or broking account. With uh any any securities firm, you know, be it Kenanga, Rakuten, you know, or Maybank or any 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 other um security firms, yeah. Yep. So yeah. To, to uh to put it simply, Equate is a fun house. So if you want to trade their ETF, you just use any stockbroking uh, firm. You can buy the ETF on the exchange. Yeah. All right. So you don't have to open an account with them. Um. So the next question here is that yeah, does inverse ETF mean the um, opposite of ETF price? Uh, maybe uh, Mr. Ong can clarify what exactly hmm. is okay. inverse ETF. So inverse ETF is very interesting. Um, in inverse ETF is where you make money when the market are down. So that is called inverse ETF. So we have this uh, inverse ETF in, in listed in Busan, Malaysia, 
whereby if okay if today you think that hey market will be bad i know market will go down but how do i make money from market market go down right i mean there are people who wants to make money when markets are down or you know they want to hedge their positions because i have I have enough position so when market are down i want to find some hedging tools for me that you know can can, can hedge my downside so that's that's where you can invest into uh uh, uh <clears throat> inverse etf yeah. yeah so inverse the etf is one tool for you to hedge against any market downturn so aside of from invest etf uh popular uh, hedging tool would be like you know uh, KLCI futures where you can short FKLI when during a market downturn or you can do um, you can invest you can trade the put warrants on KLCI mm -hmm. that can give you the uh, the same hedging effect as well so yep. so these are the three lah, uh, that I can think of that are listed on Bursa Malaysia that can help you to uh, you know meet your hedging needs okay the next question is by Edwin can we add technical indicators such as MACD to you know to ETF price chart. What do you think? Wow, interesting. Okay, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, the answer is the, uh, the, uh, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Because technically, technically, MACD and all the indi indicator, right? All the indicator are, are a signal to tell you whether the market, you know, uh, uh, whether the market, you know, how how investors, how investors are, uh, 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 perceptions, uh, or view on on it, right? Is a uh, behavioral finance psychologic, psychologically, you know, whether how people think about the, the 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 pricing. So technically, anything that is traded, uh, that you can apply there, you know, when you see uh certain patterns and all that, generally it can, uh, you know, it will appear as the as the as the same. Okay, it's just that because um no matter no matter how ETFs price that is traded on Bursa Malaysia are still based on demand and supply. So demand and supply simply means people's perception, right? Whoever that thinks it will go up, they're willing to buy more expensive, and therefore price will continue to go up. So therefore, uh technical indicator, in theory, technical indicator is still applicable when it comes to ETF. All right. Thanks, Mr. Ong. So the next question is by Asha Kamaru Zaman. So beyond the basics, could you elaborate on the specific screening process used to ensure IETS comply with Sharia principles? Are there any Sharia compliant alternatives to common stock market indices? Mm, mm, no. Okay. So, uh, uh, the, the, the very good question. So for Sharia screening, right? Sharia screening, there is a very, very strict, basically in Malaysia stocks, I mean, um, uh, Inje Azhar, his, his question, I think quite specific, right? In, this, in Malaysia, right? In Malaysia, actually very easy because all the stocks are segregated into whether this is a Sharia stocks or non-Sharia stocks by SC, by Securities Commission. So for us, actually, we are quite easy for us to do uh, ETF in, in, in Malaysia, for Sharia ETF for, for Malaysia stocks because we only invest in the Sharia, uh, <clears throat> Sharia compliant stocks that is recognized by Securities Commission. That's it. So it's, it's, it's very easy when, 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 when it's in Malaysia because we have a general, uh, very strict uh, investment guideline that provided by 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 SC itself so everybody will be on the same page so when come to other stocks when come to uh sorry stocks in foreign countries or other other exchanges so where we will appoint we will appoint our sharia advisor uh sharia committee which will apply the same standard which will be recognized by SC as well uh to screen through all the stocks before uh before the in the, the 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 stocks can be included into the index all right thanks mr ong um the next question is the webinar mentions cost effectiveness of ietfs because can you provide a comparison of the expense ratios typically associated with the 
Sharia compliant ETF versus actively managed Islamic unit trust. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you have any actual numbers? I don't have an actual number, but um, in general term, in general term, uh, any uni unit trust, any unit trust, the management fee per annum will be one, will be one, one plus percent, while ETF the management fee generally it is much lower than than the one percent. Uh, probably only zero point six. Uh, or even lower. So you can easily check this um, um, by, by, by yourself. I mean, uh, in any specific unit trust or ETF that you want to know because it's all uh, publicly available information. Mm, so what about the cost comparison between uh, conventional ETF and also Sharia compliant ETF? Are, are, no, are Sharia compliant ETF, you know, do, do they involve more costs because of the Sharia screening or no? Mm, not really because... Because, like for example, uh, I I use my my own my own investment uh, 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 asset management firm as an example, right? We are a Sharia compliant. We are a Sharia licensed uh fund management house. So we have already, you know, regardless we issue product or not, we have already um a a a a engage a Sharia advisor. So for us, it is not a very is it, it is not a, a very high cost when it comes to uh when it comes to when it comes to uh our expense ratio i mean it won't it won't be a lot higher just because of uh the, the small addition the, the the small addition because the firm itself would have already engaged all right uh thanks mr ong um the next question is by tan how often do the ETF perform rebalancing? Uh, will it be conducted during market trading hours? Hmm. Okay. So um rebalancing typically will be will be done on quarterly basis. So what does rebalancing mean is that the index provider will give you will will go through the, the rebalancing process to to make sure what are the new list of stocks that needs to have. So for the fund manager like us, what we will do is we will buy the new stocks or the stocks that is higher weighting and sell all those stocks that is um excluded by the by the by the index and it will be done during the um during the trading hour. Yes. Mm, all right. Thanks, uh, Mr. Ong. So the next question here is when the interest rate goes down, will how will that affect the dividend stocks or the dividend-based ETF or REITs? Hmm. Okay. So when interest rate goes down, typically dividend stocks will go up. I give you an example. Uh. I give you an example. So when when dividends, when interest rate, when FD rate are 3%, okay, I have a stocks. I have a stocks that pay 3% dividend. Well, it looks very attractive. Normal, right? But when, imagine if interest rate were to drop, okay, from 3%, now Bank Nagara uh, cut our rate from 3% to 1%. So when you put your, your money into your bank, you only earn, earn 1%. Whereas on this side, this dividend stocks pay still continue to pay you 3%. Do you think it will become attractive? The answer is obviously yes. So where so will, will, will the price go up? Chances are yes. So in this case, when interest rate goes down, dividend stocks will go up in general. Thanks, Mr. Ong. So the next question is by Edwin. Um, can we trade intraday on ETF? Oh, yes. Yes, of course, yes. Because... Um, ETF is just like trading of ETF is just exactly like any uh what do you call um any listed stocks um that on 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 Bursa Malaysia. So uh you can trade you can trade intradays, you know. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the follow up question is on the gold ETF, uh trip plus gold ETF. So um the question here is is the um ETF backed by physical gold? 
um, you can check uh, because this 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 one is uh, because this ETF is actually actually uh, issued by Trade Plus, so I may not be the best person to answer to to answer this question. But you can check on their website. Yes. Yep. Um. Um. Yes, you can check on the website. Uh. But I actually know the answer. The answer is yes. It's backed by physical it's, gold. Yeah. It, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So the next question here is, um, would you discuss about how do we do asset allocation using IETFs considering the factors like risk tolerance and investment goals? Mm, okay. So actually, um, this, is a, this is a very good question because, uh, okay, so how do you do asset allocation is like what I have mentioned just now in the, in the last, my last slide. When I when I discuss about your portfolio, right? So, for example, uh, the easiest way for you to invest into a foreign foreign uh, markets is via ETF. Actually, why I say so is because that um, you know, like you know, if I want to go into US market, you know, I will need to do homework. You know, I will need to study which stocks are good and all that. But if I were just to, you know, have exposure in US market, I can just buy, you know, the US 50 ETF. If I want to have exposure in ASEAN, you know, I can just buy, you know, equate ASEAN uh, dividend ETF, you know. So it's easier. So when it comes to asset allocation, it always depends on your objective. What does is asset allocation mean? Asset allocation mean, simply means that how much money I want to allocate into my different uh, objective, my different investment goal. Uh, it, it means that, okay, I want to as, uh, have uh, at least a 30% of my cash, you know, to meet, to meet my, 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 and any commitments. So this is the, this is, this is 30%. So I have want to have a 20% have exposure in Malaysia. Okay. I want to have a 30% in, in dividend. I want to have uh, uh, another remaining 40% in US. Okay, so this is this is my my objective or my allocation. So how do I fulfill my allocation easier? You know, it will be always true using ETF because ETF give you exposure to markets in the easiest way. All right. Uh, thanks, Mister Ong. So the next question is: How does liquidity compare between um uh, Shara compliant ETFs and also conventional ETF? Are there any potential challenges for investors entering or exiting positions in Shara compliant ETF? Mm, so far from my experience, there is no difference in terms of liquidity because of the Sharia status. Um, it's just like when because it is it is actually if you look at if I if you look at stocks, right? Can I say that Sharia compliant stocks are less are less liquid? Compared to conventional or more liquid than conventional, do you do we do we do we do we? I mean, can we conclude conclude either way? The answer is obviously um no right because it's not necessarily. So likewise in the uh e ETF uh space uh is the same. So um there is no so far there is no evidence that show that uh I ETF will will be least will be will be let uh, um less uh, liquid or, or, or more liquid. It is largely based on demand and supply again, and also how well the market maker provide liquidity uh, for the ETF itself. All right. Um, so given the current market outlook, can you, you know, recommend any specific IETF that are suitable for building a diversified portfolio? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So um if I if I may share um this answer, I, I mean I mean this question by looking back at my screen. Can you still see my screen? Yes, right? I can still see your screen. Yeah, okay. So to answer this to answer this question, so what are the current market condition now? As we all know that market Markets are uh, for the past two weeks, markets are very volatile. Why is markets are very volatile is caused by a uh, most recent 
uh, what do you call um, geopolitical uh, events, right? Uh, war, war in you know um, um, in the middle in the Middle East, okay, between Iran, Israel, and 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 so on, okay. So in in a typical volatile market, okay, what you want to do is that you want to keep slightly more cash, okay, and you want to have a more diversified portfolio in the sense in in different markets okay why i say so is different market may have very different um exposure or risk exposure when it comes to certain events say for example when we talk about say um you know u.s sanction or or, or war right in, in 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 that manner when u.s sanction you know asean will be benefit a uh, u.s sanction china you know u.s uh uh ASEAN will be generally will be benefited. Okay. When when there is a war, okay, when there is a war uh in 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 the Middle East, it will be affected US more. Why? Because when Israel wants to wants to wants to go to war with Iran, you know, US will somehow be 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 affected or, or involved. Okay. Whereas Malaysia are less uh affected. So therefore, when 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 those 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 events happen, you can see that Malaysian market are quite are quite stable. I mean, compared to the regional markets. So in that manner, given the the pre, the, the the reasons outlook, what I will suggest is that you diversify your portfolio into different 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 markets. And also, one thing that is uh worth noted for the current outlook is the is the potential risk uh, a rate cut by the US right uh, everybody has been talking about it of course recently uh the the the, the federal the, the fed has been changing tone say that you know there could not could be potentially uh, no less cut or whatever but in general market still price in and believe that US dollar uh US market uh US will cut rates if not and by end of this year you know it could be early next year Okay, so if rate cuts is 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 happening, if you are a long term investors, you should have some exposure in some dividend ETF. If you ask me, well, that's a very good answer, Mister Ong. Uh, thank you so much. So I think the time is running out. Let's do one last question. Um, you know, this is question by B Kim. Can you repeat again? Where can we check the list of ETF that can be traded on a uh, bursa? Okay, so if you want to look at the whole long whole whole, whole list of all ETFs in Malaysia, you can go to Bruce Bruce Marketplace uh website. Yep, we can visit. Shane, can you share the, the 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 link on on the chat box uh, uh, okay. of Bruce Marketplace later? Let me find the link. Uh, but in the meantime, while I'm finding the link. Um, let me just ask one last question so I've got time to find the link. So um, the question here is for ETF they are tracking the UX indices or UX mm. stocks. Will the US dollar currency uh, differentiation with Malaysian ringgit affect the share price? Mm. Uh, technically, yes. Any foreign investments, you know, not only US, but any foreign investment, if, if you invest in, in uh, what do you call... Uh, ASEAN, China, Europe, or Japan, or, or even US, uh, as long as your underlying, as long as your underlying is uh is uh foreign currency, you will be uh somehow affected by the uh currency exchange. Just to share a little bit more on on the US 50 ETF that I shared, uh, that, that I've been quoting as example. Uh, throughout my presentation is that this ETF is actually denominated or traded in USD. So if you are someone who wish to keep your, you know, to keep a portion of your money or your investment or your wealth in USD, uh, in, in, in USD, you know, without need to convert back or, you know, if you have kids that, you know, planning to go to US study and you want to keep USD and all that, that you that investment itself, that ETF itself will serve your purpose because it is denominated in, in, in USD. So if you put there, 
you know, you keep investing there. Say, for example, I know my kids is going to study uh, in US in the next three years. Now onwards, every month I I, I buy some, I, I buy some and uh, you know, of, of this ETF and keep there. So I don't need to worry about, you know, three years down the road, the USD rate are up, up or down because I will essentially have the US exposure. Yep. Uh, thanks so much. Sure. Thanks so much for the clarification. So now we know how do we uh save up for the children education fund. <laughs> <laughs> so ETF is an option that you can consider. Okay. So I just uh put the link to the Bursa Marketplace. So if you want to have the full list of the ETF listing, you can visit the link that I've just given to you. Uh, in short, it is www.bursamarketplace.com slash mkt slash the market slash etf uh so on this bursa marketplace website you can also see the iopv of the etf which stands for indicative optimized portfolio value which tells you the uh, real-time net asset value of the etf right all right so this is um uh the good part about uh, uh bursa marketplace uh, of course, you can also find the list of the ETF on your stockbroking platform. Okay, so long that you type, you know, screen by the asset class, I think you should be able to find the ETF. All right, so I think with that, we shall conclude our Q and A session today. So I we have spent adequate amount of time to do Q and A, and for those questions who still remain unanswered, uh, don't worry. Uh, we'll get Mister Ong come back again. Uh, if he's uh uh available next time then we'll do more etf sessions for you if uh if you all have time and you know if we can get the time of mr ong so with that i would uh thank all of you for uh staying here until the end of this session so ladies and gentlemen you just heard from the head of esg and etf investment from uh equate capital syndrome Bohat, mr ong sun chong thank you so much mr ong thank you thank you so much you know thanks for all your all your questions and your attention, you know, from the questions, I know the audience are, uh, you know, uh, 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 listening to me. Yes. So thank you so much. And thanks, Shane and uh, Busa Malaysia.